Oh, well, guys, that was a killer workout. Oh, yeah. Man, I can't believe you maxed out today. I don't, I don't know, man. I'm not feeling too good. I got like a headache and like, my legs hurt me or something. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, right? Right? I don't know, I think I'm gonna get some water. What'd you say? Huh? What did you say? I'm gonna get some water. You ain't making sense, man. Oh. Well, that doesn't look very good. No, that doesn't look good at all. You yeah. alright? Right? Mm -hmm. Did you, Dolly, did you really curse? You oh. urinated. What's wrong? Mm -hmm. Hey, just lay out. Take a breath. I think I'm gonna call 911. Hello? 911? Something's wrong with my pal. Eric? That's me. What? Hello? Oh, what do we have today? Possible stroke victim. His name is Eric. He just came to the office today. Alright. Eric? Hi. How are you doing today? I'm thinking, Tell me what happened. Um, well, it started off with a headache, and then um, my left side and my speech started kind of going a little, like my hand, my foot, and obviously you can hear it. And then um, I kind of fell and uh, peed myself. Fell and peed yourself? Yeah. All right, so you, you seems like you had some uh, aphasia, some unilateral contralateral motor weakness. Had some sensory cha sensory changes. Seems like it fell to your left limbs, and uh, then you had the urine. Uh, I believe you had a stroke. Uh, what a stroke is is happens when the blood flow to an area of the brain is cut off, which causes brain cells to deprive oxygen and die. Um, how your uh, symptoms seem to be that it seems like you're having a anterior cerebral artery stroke. Uh, we're gonna do some hands-on tests. Can I have you lay back to have your shoes and socks? I'm just going to test for sensory changes. Now let me know if you feel this. Do you feel this one? Yes. Yes? How about now? No. So it seems like you have no sensory down in your left limb. Uh, you can sit back up. I'm going to suggest sending you to get an MRI and we'll get a brain scan done and we'll have a better results from that. Alright? Alright. Okay, Eric, I got your results here. So here's a picture of MRI. So I'm here for you. If you look at this, turn the light. I see there's quite a bit of uh, activity going on right in this part of your brain. That's going to be caused by the anterior cerebral artery. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send you off to a vascular neurologist and they'll give you a better understanding of what's going on. Again, I'm, I'm really sorry to give you this bad news. Um, just keep taking your medication and hopefully it'll get better soon, but you know, no promises. What's next? Eric Burr, stroke patient. It's not looking too good. Hi. Hello, Eric. I'm Brett Reynolds. I'm the vascular neurologist here at the hospital. How are you? I'm alright. Well, a little less than alright, I hear, but yeah. I'll take it. So, uh, Dr. Buell stated that you had yourself quite the day, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, your MRI, I have pulled up here, and your symptoms showed that you suffered from an anterior cerebral artery stroke. Now, with all my patients, I like to inform them a little bit about what their condition is, so I'd like to do that. At the base of the brain, the carotid and vertebral resilar arteries form a circle of communicating arteries known as the circle of willies. From this circle, other arteries, the anterior cerebral artery, like the one that we're dealing with today, the middle cerebral artery, and the posterior cerebral artery, arise and travel to all parts of the brain. Now, because of the carotid and vertebral brazilar arteries form a circle, if one of the main arteries is occluded, the distal smaller arteries that it supplies can receive blood from the other arteries. This is called collateral circulation. 
The anterior cerebral artery, commonly referred to as the ACA, supplies the frontal, prefrontal, and supplementary motor cortex, as well as parts of the primary cortex and primary sensory cortex. ACA infarcts are very rare because of the collateral circulation provided by the anterior communicating artery. I'm talking like around 2% of occurring strokes rare. Lucky you, right? On top of that, to add a little bit of salt to the wound, I have brought up here that Asians and African Americans have higher rates of intracranial arter arterial occlusive disease than whites. Now, the intracranial artery occlusive disease in these populations typically involves the main stem of the ACA. In whites, the arterial occlusive disease typically involves the extracranial carotid arteries. Wow, it's an interesting fact. Yeah. Good to know. Yes, I'm glad to uh, be able to inform you today. Now, Eric, I'd like to take a closer look at what your MRI shows us today. As you can see here, the lighter aspects of these, this MRI shows us the parts of the brain that was affected by this ACA stroke. Do you have any questions at this time? Not that I can think of. Okay, well I've got all the answers to the questions you don't have. Now, unfortunately, the ACA deals with parts of the brain that controls logical thought, personality, and voluntary movement, especially of the legs. Now, strokes in the anterior cerebral artery results in opposite leg weakness, typically. If both anterior cerebral territories are affected, profound mental symptoms may result such as akinetic mutism, or loss of the ability to speak or even move. Radiographic features of this ACA stroke are as follows. Paramedium frontoparietal cerebral cortex, anterior corpus callosum, anterior limb of the internal capsule, and the inferior portion of the caudate head. Some symptoms you may be experiencing or experience are dysarrhythmia, or slurred speech due to weakness in the muscles used for speaking, contralateral motor weakness in the hand, face, or leg, left limb apraxia, which is a condition in which voluntary movement of the limb is impaired, and finally, I heard about your little uh, spill earlier, urinary incontinence. Don't want to talk about it. <laughs> now, Eric, it's unfortunate that this happened to you, but with the help from our hospital's physical therapist and occupational therapist, we'll get you back on track. Awesome. How is this guy still alive? Eric? Hello? Hi Eric, I'm Dr. Nick. I'm the rehabilitation specialist at this hospital. I'm gonna tell you some of your options today. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Well, the best thing for us to do after anyone has a stroke is to begin rehabilitation as soon as possible. And given that your doctor has cleared you, you're no longer at a risk of having a stroke or any complication from it, we can start doing that now. Now everybody responds to rehab differently. I'll be bleak with you. Very few people recover quickly. Most people require a long-term rehabilitation program that can last months to years. But the focus of rehabilitation is to regain your lost skills. In your case, I see you have dysarthria, aphasia, unilateral contralateral motor weakness, sensory changes and problems with your left limb, limbs, and uh, urinary incontinence. So what we're going to do is set you up with a physical therapist and an occupational therapist and maybe some other specialists to try to make you regain these skills. And uh, it's important for you to know that successful stroke rehabilitation depends a lot on one, the severity of your stroke, which from the looks of it isn't too bad, it could be a lot worse, and two, your motivation, your mood, and how willing you are to stick to the rehabilitation program. So I'm going to ask you, are you willing? Are you able? Completely. All right, let's get to it. Well, you have several different options for where you can seek treatment. The, the first would be an inpatient center, which is a place you would stay at for about two to three weeks, and you would undergo very intensive rehabilitation. Your other option is an outpatient center, in which you would just spend a few hours a day, two, three, maybe four days a week, and you would receive less intensive re rehab. The third is a skilled nursing facility, uh, some of which specialize in rehabilitation, others offer less intense therapy programs, and the fourth is home programs. 
which obviously you do it in your own home, there's a lot of flexibility there, but it can be disadvantageous because you don't have access to a lot of specialized rehab equipment. Uh, is there anything, any of those stick out to you which you would prefer? I like the idea of the outpatient center. That's great. Outpatient center is what I was going to recommend. Uh, regardless of where you seek treatment, a variety of specialists will see to it that you receive the best possible care that is available and hopefully you will have a speedy recovery. These specialists are going to include your primary care physician who can refer you to neurologists and specialists in other areas like um, physical medicine or rehabilitation depending on which direction your condition goes. There are also rehabilitation nurses that are especially trained to deal with things like this. And like I said before, physical therapists and occupational therapists, which I feel you're gonna get the most results from. Physical therapists are gonna help you relearn skills such as walking and keeping your balance. I know you've had a lot of trouble with your gait after this uh, stroke. Uh, occupational therapists can help you relearn arm and hand movements to get you back to doing activities of daily living, get you back to the gym lifting hard like I know you like to do. OTs also might be able to help you address issues with swallowing and cognitive issues if you're having any problems with that. And uh, they're also, they may be able to help you address issues with your speech and uh, language pathologies if you're having problems with that. But there are also speech and language pathologists which are specially trained to address these issues. Uh, lastly, we, have, we could set you up with psychologists to deal with any cognitive issues you may be having now or in the future. And they can also monitor your mental health during what can sometimes be a very trying process. All right, uh, do you have any questions for me? Sounds all good to me. Great, I'll get some paperwork. We'll set you up with a physical therapist right away. Thank you. Yep, have a good day. Good.